After verifying that the pump to be repacked was isolated and tagged out following facility procedures, the workman is then ready to begin dismantling the seal on the inboard end of the pump. As I said, the steps involved here are essentially the same as those for a valve. First, the two nuts which hold the gland follower in place must be removed. Now you notice something peculiar to pumps here. You're frequently working in an environment where you have limited access to the parts that you need to work on. If you'll notice in this example, the bearing is so close to the seal area that there's really a quite limited space to work in. And this is one of the problems that you're going to be faced with when repacking pumps. So the first step the workman performs then is to loosen and remove the two nuts which hold the gland follower in place. Once these nuts have been taken off and set aside, then the gland follower can be pulled back on the shaft. Now again, you'll notice that he has a limited space to work in. With some pump designs, the gland follower is in two pieces. And in that case, once it's been unbolted, the two halves can be taken off of the shaft and set aside, giving more room. In this particular pump, the gland follower is of a one-piece design, so it's simply drawn back as far as possible on the shaft to allow packing removal. Now, the packing is removed in exactly the same fashion as we discussed for valves. Using a packing hook or some similar tool to thread into the packing, it can be drawn out of the stuffing box. And as before, care must be exercised with whatever tool you're using to be certain that you do not scratch the surface of the shaft or the packing sleeve, which is frequently installed on the shaft, and the surface of the stuffing box itself. So the workman continues to repeat these steps to remove each ring of packing. He makes use, in this case, of a corkscrew-like packing removal tool, threads it into the packing until he can draw out at least one end of the ring and grasp it by hand and remove it. Now in this particular pump, after removing the first two rings of packing, the workman saw that the next component in the stuffing box was a lantern ring. So he made a note on the data sheet that he kept for this particular job that there were two rings of packing installed on the outside of the lantern ring. After making this note, he was then ready to remove the lantern ring itself. Now, lantern rings are normally provided with holes, which can be engaged by a packing tool in order to allow removal of the ring. In some cases, you'll find that the holes are tapped. If that's the case, then a piece of threaded rod or a long bolt can be used can be threaded into the hole, and then you can use that to draw the lantern ring out. In this particular case, while the lantern ring had holes, they were not threaded. So instead, the workman makes use of a packing tool, engaging it in the openings of the lantern ring in order to draw it out of the stuffing box. Now, as you can see, frequently this takes a certain amount of grappling in order to get a hold of the lantern ring, because, of course, it's not flexible like the packing is. In this particular pump, the lantern ring is of a two-piece design. So what comes out of the stuffing box is really half of the lantern ring first. So after working around with the packing tool, his fingers, and so forth, to work it free, half of the lantern ring can be drawn out of the stuffing box and set aside. And this, of course, is followed by the second half. Now, as before, when removing a lantern ring, use care to avoid scratching either the stuffing box walls or the surface of the shaft or packing sleeve as appropriate. Now, once the two-piece lantern ring has been removed from the stuffing box and set aside in a safe location, the workman then proceeds to remove the remaining packing in the stuffing box. This is done as before using a packing removal tool using care to avoid damage to the shaft or the stuffing box walls, he threads the tool into the end of the ring of packing, and then using the tool, draws that free end out of the stuffing box to where he can get a hold of it, and then removes the ring itself from the stuffing box. So he continues to remove packing in this manner until all of the packing has been taken out of the stuffing box. After removing the last ring of packing from the stuffing box, as with the valves that we discussed earlier, the workman will then make notes regarding the number of rings of packing which he has removed, and this information will be used in determining how many he needs to reinstall. 
In the case of this particular pump, there was a total of six packing rings. The stuffing box contained four rings, followed by the lantern ring, followed by two more rings of packing. So after making these notes, the workman then proceeds with the next step in the operation. And again, this is a predictable step after what we've discussed earlier with repacking valves. He needs to clean out the stuffing box and the surface of the packing sleeve on the pump shaft. Now again, you'll note that he has difficulties because of limited access to the parts that he's working with. However, it's important that the cleaning be performed as best you can. And the purpose is the same as we've talked about earlier, to remove any remaining bits or pieces of packing which may have flaked off during the packing removal process. So after wiping out the stuffing box with a rag, he is then ready for the next step. And again, this is one you could probably predict, a careful inspection of the stuffing box and the surface of the shaft to look for any nicks, scratches, or gouges which might result in excessive leak off even with new packing installed. And of course, following this examination, he's then ready to make whatever checks he needs to to determine the type and quantity of packing he will need to install when repacking the pump. Now, how does he determine what type and size of packing he should use in the pump? Well, he does it in exactly the same manner as we've already discussed for valves. He may refer to a table, such as the one in your workbook, which describes the various types of packing which can be used versus the conditions under which they're used, the pressure, temperature, type of fluid, and so forth. He may refer to the manufacturer's instruction book, which was provided with the pump. And if necessary, he may perform measurements of the pump itself. And these are the same measurements that we discussed with valves. He would measure the inside diameter of the stuffing box, and the outside diameter of the shaft or packing sleeve. And then from these measurements could calculate the size of the packing required. If necessary, he may also measure the depth of the stuffing box to determine the number of rings of packing that were required. Well, in any event, the steps are essentially the same as we've discussed earlier. So while our workman is making these determinations and obtaining the new packing, why don't we take a break and let you review the steps we've discussed in removing pump packing. In the last segment, we saw the steps involved in removing packing from a typical centrifugal pump. And if you recall, when we left, the workman involved was determining the type of packing that he was going to need to install, and he was on his way to get that packing. Well, he's now obtained the pump packing, and he's ready to cut it into rings of the appropriate size. So let's join him and see how he does it. Now, as you probably noticed, because of the tight space that he had to work in, it was not practical for the workman to wrap the packing around the pump shaft in order to establish rings of the proper length. So instead, what he did was to obtain a piece of pipe which had the same outside diameter as the outside diameter of the pump shaft. And he is now wrapping the packing around that pipe and will cut it to rings in this manner. Now this does give one advantage over using the shaft itself. There's now no concern about performing the cutting while the packing is wrapped around the pipe. Now you recall when we used this technique on a valve, we were using the valve stem and he could not cut all the way through the packing for fear of scarring or scratching the valve stem. But since he's using a piece of pipe, he can perform the cutting while the packing is wrapped around the pipe, thus assuring himself that the packing is cut at the proper angle and that the rings will fit as they should into the pump. So he continues to cut the packing one ring at a time until the required number of rings have been cut. And you recall for this particular application, a total of six rings were needed. Once the new packing has been obtained and cut into rings of the proper length, it is then installed following the same steps that we discussed for valves. So the workman takes the first ring of packing, places it around the shaft, verifies that the ends join as they should, and then presses it into the stuffing box. Now, as with valves, it's important that each ring of packing be individually seated in the stuffing box. So first, he pushes the ring in as far as possible with the gland follower, and then seats it using a special tool which he has made. This is a flexible packing removal tool with the hook cut off. 
Now, the reason he uses this is because of the tight quarters involved. It's impossible to use a bushing of the type that we saw earlier on this particular pump. Now, of course, it's important that you not use a pointed object because that could damage the new packing. He then repeats this step with each succeeding ring of packing. And since there are four rings installed before the lantern ring, he staggers the joints 90 degrees, following the rule that you will find in your workbook. Now, after a total of four rings of packing have been installed, he is then ready to install the lantern ring. Now, it's extremely important where lantern rings are used that they be set in position at the proper point in the sequence because the lantern ring must be positioned in the stuffing box such that it matches the connection for lubricant or sealant as appropriate. In this particular case, water is injected as a sealing medium on this pump. But regardless of the reason for the lantern ring, it's extremely important that it be installed at the proper point, which, as you'll recall in this pump, is after the fourth ring of packing. So the workman takes the two-piece lantern ring and inserts it in the stuffing box, using care to be certain that the two pieces line up properly, and then fully inserts it against the fourth ring of packing. Next, then, comes the remaining two rings of packing, which are installed after the lantern ring. And these are installed in the same manner as we've just seen. Now, since there's only two rings at this point, that is, two rings after the lantern ring, as we're going to see, the joints of the two rings are staggered 180 degrees, again, following the rule you'll find in your workbook. So the workman installs the first of these two rings, as before, wrapping it around the shaft, carefully assuring himself that the two ends butt together as they should, and then seats the ring by the use of the gland follower. Now, since the stuffing box is almost full at this point, it's no longer necessary for him to use that special tool in order to assure that the ring is firmly seated. Instead, he can take the gland follower and press the ring into position by hand. This ring is then followed by the last ring. And as I said, this one is installed with its joint 180 degrees from the joint on the previous ring. And it's installed as before, placed around the shaft, the two ends butted up, and then pushed by hand into the stuffing box. Now, once this last ring is installed, of course, then the gland follower will come along behind. So the workman takes the ring and presses it into the stuffing box by hand. Then with it in position, the gland follower is drawn up into its position and placed over the studs which hold it in place. Then the nuts are threaded onto the studs in preparation for an initial tightening of the packing. Now, it's very important that this packing receive only an initial tightening at this point. As with a valve, the final tightening is done with fluid in the pump and the pump in operation. Over-tightening at this point can result in overheating and destruction of the packing when the pump is started. So instead, it's just drawn up snugly and evenly, and then the two nuts are backed off again and left finger tight until the pump can be placed in operation. So those are the steps involved, then, in installing packing on a typical pump. And the one final step that we have not yet seen is the adjustment of that packing. We said that needed to be done with fluid in the pump and with a pump in operation. And as we're going to see, this is a rather critical operation. Now, it's going to be quite some time before we can operate the pump that we just saw packed. However, we do have another pump in operation and a workman preparing to perform a packing adjustment. So let's see how this is done. With the pump in operation and the nut still loose, a substantial amount of leak-off will occur. And this is good for the new packing because it provides both cooling and lubrication. However, the leak-off should be reduced to a minimum level by packing adjustment. Now, you don't want to stop the leak-off. You just want to reduce it to the proper amount because with a running pump, a certain amount of leak-off is required for cooling and lubrication purposes. So what the workman does is to take up very gradually on the two packing nuts, using care to be sure he takes up an equal amount on each one, and also monitoring the amount of leak off and monitoring for any indications of packing overheating, because over tightening can cause overheating of the packing and packing damage. Now you'll notice that as he takes up on the packing, 
of course, the amount of leak-off is reduced. But you'll also notice at this point that a small amount of steam comes out of the packing. This, of course, is an indication of overheating, so the workman immediately loosens the packing adjusting nuts. Now, these adjusting steps must be repeated over a period of time, sometimes hours, sometimes days, depending on the pump, until the packing is finally seated in the stuffing box and sealing properly. 